she'll search for the treasure. Okay, Blaze, this is it. That can save Pixie Hollow. Walt Disney Pictures presents Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure. Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure. This is the sequel to the directed video film Tinkerbell. Released in 2009, that first movie must have done very well in uh, DVD sales. It was like, okay, let's make more of these. And I think there's like five sequels to Tinkerbell. I actually surprisingly didn't mind the first Tinkerbell. I thought it was a solid direct-to-video film. I was I was going to give this sequel an open mind. Uh, is this one any good? Well, you'll have to find out. A blue harvest moon will rise, allowing the fairies to use a precious moonstone to restore the pixie dust tree, the source of all their magic. But when Tinkerbell accidentally puts all of Pixie Hollow in jeopardy, she must venture out across the sea on a secret quest to set things right. So, I came into this sequel with an open mind. Uh, I was hoping it would be an enjoyable film, like the first film. Uh, the sad thing is there's a lot of potential for some to make a really good sequel. Uh, the movie's got great animation, like the first movie. I, I like the magical quality they try to evoke with the setting with Pixie Hollow. And I really like the autumn aesthetic in this movie, which I thought was uh, uh, really, really good. Uh, still good voice work in this film. Uh, I complimented Mae Whitman when I reviewed the first Tinker Bell. She's good as Tinkerbell again in this movie. Uh, they make they make uh, some slight changes to her character that I thought was interesting because uh, everyone knows Tinkerbell's dress in this film. Uh, very iconic if you watch, especially the animated film. They change it up a little bit because of the adventure that she goes on to where she kind of looks like Peter Pan in this movie. I'm not going to lie. It kind of took me out of it when I saw like the... Uh, thumbnail picture well that's all that i'm like this looks kind of goofy but uh, i read the reason they did that was to it would look more adventurous for a dress like that compared to the uh uh the dress that she would normally wear like being on this like with the fall aesthetic and the event she goes on i think i think the animators thought the dress would be more of a distraction so i think i respect the choice it looks goofy when you first see it but when you realize why they make the change it makes sense but yet, I, the adventure itself I thought was pretty solid. I wasn't sure. The title's kind of misleading because it's like, when you think the lost treasure, you think, oh, we're looking for like jewels and diamonds and stuff. This big treasure chest. No, she's just looking for this random mirror. <laughs> That's all she's looking for. <laughs> and I, I guess the buildup is kind of lackluster, I guess. But I like that this film is a little bit more, has more of an adventure vibe, whereas like the first movie, it's just, learning about Tinkerbell's character and the world of Pixie Hollow. Uh, the first one was more of like establishing the world. This was more of a adventure. So I respect it's trying to do that. What brings it down though, is like the stuff that they do with it. I'm like, yeah, the adventure itself is solid. I admire what you're trying to do. And some of the messages you're trying to do about like the power of friendship and stuff. I'm like, I get that. I'm I'm for that. <sighs> okay, how they how they execute it. It's very rocky. Very rocky. Uh one of the things I appreciated about the first movie was it sets up that Tinkerbell has a bit of a hot headed hot hot headed temper. She has she's has anger issues, which fits in line with how she is in the animated film. See, she was jealous of Wendy in the animated film and even tried to kill her. Unseen, often overlooked in the animated film. So I'm like, I, I was curious how they were going to play into that in some of these other films. Well, they play into that in this movie. They don't do it well, though. That's And that's the unfortunate part. Um, I feel like if you want to dive into the fact that Tinkerbell has anger issues, let her be angry for, like, legit reasons. Here it's like, oh, this other fairy just keep just keep who's trying to help me out. I'm just sick of him for no apparent reason. That's what that's what fuels the conflict of this movie. 
And it really makes Tinkerbell more of a control freak. And that really took me out of the story. When, when it was building up to that and it and the anger was built up for petty nonsense, I'm like, you really missed some opportunities there with the story. Like I think if it I think if it was I think if it was built around something that you know she had more of a right to be angry about and she took it too far. I think it would have been more relatable, but here it's just, Oh, this guy who's trying to help me out. I'm just sick of him being in my space. I'm like, really? I've been around people like that. I don't want to deal with people like that. <laughs> That's not relatable. That's just annoying. And so when they do it in this movie, it's really annoying. <laughs> And I think, and then it adds to different frustrations to where it's the other characters who have to apologize to Tinkerbell when it's Tinkerbell who is the one who caused all the problems in this movie. Tinkerbell makes no apologies in this movie. That's my other problem with this film. Yeah, she realizes she made bad decisions, but she allows the other people to apologize first when they're not the ones at fault. And I'm like, you botched your main message of the movie where it's the main character is the one who realizes she's in the wrong. And she's the one who should have said, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? That that's, that's where I felt like it should have built into. And we didn't get that. And it lost a lot of points for really botching fundamental ethics, fundamental morals, as far as having friendships and learning how to forgive one another. I was like, really? Why would you, how, wh how could you botch this up? But yeah, that's the big thing that brings the movie down. Also, uh, Tinkerbell going on a solo quest, not really the most exciting thing. They pair her up with a firefly for most of the movie. It's like, I get what they're trying to do. It's like, she feels like she, if she shares the error that she made that caused like a panic and she feel like everyone would hate her. But yeah, just her going on a solo adventure with a firefly. It's like not really the most exciting thing in the world. So yeah, there's that really frustrating because I wanted to really like this movie. Uh, I, I think there's potential for a great adventure story. And I admire what they were trying to go with, like, the message of the movie. And there's some really cool visuals in there. But overall, I feel like this is a step down from the first movie. And I think the big thing that hurt it was how they botched what could have been an interesting story element with diving into Tinkerbell's anger and then making it to where she pretty much learns nothing by the end of the film and i'm like really you really you really botched that one up disney come on now you could do better than that so yeah this one uh when i when i uh watched the film i gave it a three out of five but the more i'm sitting here talking about it, i'm dropping it down to two and a half two and a half out of five the weakest film that i covered in this live stream very very frustrating watch uh this was whoo story not good not good at all uh just watch the first movie hopefully the other movies are better i'm hoping it's a case where hoping it's not the case where like the first movie was good but then the sequels get progressively worse i hope it's not like the ice age movies uh yeah i guess we'll find out